Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode nine of Studio Time with Rios. In today's episode, we're gonna be making some future bounds. Big shout out to Oxo Carpo for this idea. I think it's a great idea. If you guys have any ideas yourselves on what you'd like to see next on Studio Time with Rios, be sure to drop them down below. There's not really much else to say. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, you guys, episode nine on its way. I can't believe we're almost already at 10. That's absolutely crazy to me. Today, we're gonna be working on some future bounds as mentioned, as the title probably says i picked out a few quick samples on splice that maybe we can use in today's project so we have this vocal here work your fingers to the bone i know you can keep me warm don't you leave it scared could be cool to work with that we have some like a a some cool hi-hats some cool percussion dope what is this oh this is like a cool art Pretty standard clap, some vocal shots, and then another vocal. Oh, yeah, that vocal is super sick. I think I want to work around that. Maybe today we'll start with a break. I'm going to start with a bass line instead of chords. Okay, so this sound is a little aggressive. This would make for a cool drop lead, however... A lot of the times in these future bounce tracks, the bass in the break is pretty aggressive, just filtered down. All right, so the sound is cool. Now for the actual notes. In Future Bounce, I find that the melodies and the chords are pretty fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep that in mind. Okay, that sounds pretty sick, actually. Let's rock with that for now. The next sound that I'm gonna pull up is from Silent, and it's just gonna be literally the init chord preset. This is very popular in this sort of genre, just to have this filter down a bunch. Maybe we can even get a little cheeky at a Camel Crusher. Give it a little bit more power. And we will copy the bass line over and then create some quick triads and maybe adjust the voicing. So let's try moving these up. Okay, yeah, that actually sounds really sick. Let me bring in some of these other elements that I have from Splice that I showed you guys. Yeah, this one I love. Let's try this first. Um, so right now I'm working in C-sharp minor, which means this would have to get pitched up four semitones. Let's try adding OTT on here. It actually sounds good with a lot of OTT. The other thing that we'd have to do is just make these adjustments. So this beginning part obviously has like this little fade in. We don't want that. We want it to be consistent throughout. So we'll just copy this part over. And then this ending part has a click. So yeah, we'll just copy that over as well. Cool. So now we have a consistent drone. And then right now. Okay, yeah. That sounds super sick. So I think honestly what I'll wind up doing is maybe cut up this vocal a bit over here and then bring in like the full vocal. Yeah, that'll probably be best, I think. So first and foremost, I'm going to get a stadium clap in there. I think that'll fit really nicely. What about actually some of these elements, maybe for the drums? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I picked these out for the drop, but that one's kind of cool. What about this? Okay, that's that's a little muy caliente. That's pretty nice. <laughs> the rhythm actually works perfectly with what I have. I don't even have to like slice it up, which is nice. Okay, I'll take that all day. Um, I don't like this triple triplet tom thing. Okay, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. However, I do like that reverb clap exhaust dealio that's in there. So uh, just to fill this gap, I'll add my own reverb clap. All 
Okay, now we just need a kick. Um, I think a stadium-ish kick or an acoustic kick would work well here. Yeah, like one of these. We'll try them out. Does need a little work. I think what I want to try to do is just clip it straight up. Hard clip. Okay, yeah, that sounds better. Sounds a little tighter, a little fatter. The other thing that I'm hearing right now is I love this percussion groove. But these toms are a little, they're a little thin. They need some help. So let me see if I can just layer it with one of my own here. Beautiful. Okay, that sounds really good. I think the only other element that I'm missing is either like a ride or like a shaker, tambourine, something like that to give it a little bit more high end energy. So let's try a shaker first, I guess, or tambourine, shaker, tambourine. I don't know. We'll try a shaker first. Oh, it's kind of like a mix of both. Maybe this will be the perfect fit. Okay, it sounds good, but I want it to be faster. Yeah, like something faster. I wanna add a riser here. There's one I have in mind. It is this one. I think this will sound good here. This will also help fill out the high end a bit. And then this is just screaming to be done. But if we repeat the goodbye and then create that into a riser or make that into a riser rather, goodbye. I think that's just obvious. I think that'll sound good here. So, goodbye. so we'll just loop this part. Goodbye. Bye. 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 All right, before we go ahead and move forward, I want to go ahead and quickly organize everything. I will be right back. All right, guys. So I just finished organizing everything. So now I'm ready to move forward. While I was organizing, I was just listening to it on loop. And I actually think I'll probably do what I've actually done in my own record sometimes, which is just have like a shorter vocal and just kind of have it repeat itself twice. So, you know, here would be like the intro. It'll just start off really energetic. We'll bring in some drums and then I'll go into build up, drop, etc. So with all that being said, let's get down. Let's get down a bit. <laughs> Oh my God, that was bad. Okay. I really like how it sounds right now. I think I want to go ahead, add some side chain to some of the synths. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be dope. I guess we'll just work on the build up first. So. We'll go ahead and create a riser straight away. So we're gonna just pitch up this vocal. And then another thing that we could do to make it cooler is just add a endless smile. So the next thing that I would have to do is just add some like impacts, risers, all that good stuff. I think what I'm gonna do is I like the tail of this impact here. Heat one, but it doesn't have a sweep bleeding into it. So I'll probably just cut this one here. A little bit of this and then a little bit of that. And then we need some like crazy snares for the build. This might be able to work for a build snare. Let's try it out. So this is going to be the build snare. Let's try maybe pitching it up towards the end. Actually, you know what? This snare might need another layer to give it more body. Let's try this one quick. All right, so this layer here is just giving it some more body. I'm going to go ahead and link this to the snare automation clip. So they pitch up together. I'm hearing another like sub boom or our impact right here.
we'll see. We could always adjust that. I have a lot of ideas right now, so I just want to get them down and then we could refine them later. Another thing is having like a faster rhythm snare underneath this build one. So we'll try some of these. And like I said, this is going to just be playing a faster rhythm. So maybe we'll add some little rolls. Now this build is gonna be predicated on whatever drop I'm gonna make. So I don't wanna go too crazy. I guess the last thing that I'll do is just try to find a cool riser and then we'll move on to the drop. So let me explore some of these tonal risers. Okay, so this would be like the tape stop riser bada bing bada boom okay guys so now we get to the fun part let's actually start working on a drop so huh i don't know what i want to start with so i guess i mean i'm probably definitely maybe gonna use the the break bass line and like the break chords like those melodies and then we'll just create a melody on top of that so let me start with the bass line Maybe this one. See, I know for sure, like, the bass line's gotta be very rhythmic, very bouncy. I mean, it's the name of the game, quite literally, so. I think right here would actually be a good spot to introduce that, like, swingy bounce that makes future bounce so recognizable. This note should get delayed a bit. Right? Wait, hold on. I did it with the percussion. Let me just copy it over. So it'd be the sixth. Okay, so it's here. Yeah, yeah, okay, here we go, so. So I like that rhythm a lot. I basically just copied that over and then adjusted the notes to follow the bass line for the break. So I think that's a good foundational layer for the bass. I do wanna layer it a ton more. That's sick. I take it back. The first one is a little too, it's just a little too happy for me. It's not, it's not strong enough. It's not powerful enough. I actually have a sound in my, uh, in my pack. This is kind of what I'm looking for. Cause it has a nice attack. It's not like completely sustained. It almost has like a plucky, uh, you know, envelope to it. And it's super aggressive. So I think this would work well for, for that layer that I'm missing. For now, we'll start with this. Might need some more layers, we'll see, but it's a good starting point. You guys know what time it is. It's time to get those drop leads in. This is definitely super, super mega important. There's two elements that I always hear in almost every future bounce track, no matter who makes it, no matter who it's by. So I hear this layer used a lot. You know, which is that very like classic big room S sound. So I wanna keep that as a layer. And then I also hear, you know, a whistle sort of layer as well. Yeah. So you can hear that like whistly sound. I think that's really, really common. So I think these two layers are a definite starting point. And then we just need to get a lead that will be strong as like the main lead. Those are just good supporting leads. It might be a cool layer to give the lead some transient, make it a little cooler. Let's see what else. Damn, this one also could be cool for transients. We're gonna just keep stacking these layers. Okay, so we have a ton of layers here. What do they all sound like together? This is absurd, but let's see. Okay, pretty decent. I want this layer to be sticking out more, as well as this one. This whistle layer, I need to cut out the low end. There's a lot of ish that I just don't want in there. Um, and then I guess we'll just throw some OTT on this quick. For now, I'm gonna turn off some of these layers because I don't wanna deal with all that. So let's get some processing going. Um, we'll start with Camel Crusher, the classic. And then we'll try Focus One. I wanna go ahead and create a melody. That'll help me figure out what kind of sounds we need, so. Okay, wait, maybe too much Portamento. Turn it down a bit. We go higher here instead.
Could be cool to have a call and response sort of melody. Okay, maybe this melody is gonna work. Obviously the leads don't sound good yet, but let's uh, let's play around with this. I think to check if these leads are gonna work, we should probably see how they sound with the break. All right, so we'll just grab a, a pluck sound here. Okay, now that we know it works, now we can make some more lead adjustments. This lead definitely needs to change. Maybe if we just play this on a lower octave. What are these other sounds here? So that's an interesting sound that might work. What else do we got? And what's this last lead? Yeah, no, that'll stay muted. <laughs> that'll stay muted. Okay, this is a really cool lead stack so far. We need to have some more edm -y leads though, for sure. I think we could actually get away with taking out the simple lead and then we can go ahead and swap that for a super saw-esque sort of lead to give it some more energy. Another thing that is super, super popular with Future Balance and their leads is the fact that they like cut off the volume a lot. It becomes like a little choppy, but that adds some groove. And then there's a lot of like reverb throws and good stuff like that. So I always use Arts Acoustic for my reverb throws. I will also throw in a Fruity Balance. Where you at? Cool. This way we can make it super, super choppy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a Valhalla delay just to give the leads a general sense of space, vibe, etc. whatever word you wanna use. Let's find some spots where we could throw in the reverb throws. So definitely right here. Do a big one here. Alrighty, folks. Okay, so these are some rough reverb throws that we'll adjust as we see fit. Another thing that is done a lot in these future balance tracks is to automate an LFO tool. The LFO tool is gonna give the reverb throws a really cool like flutter effect. Now let's go ahead and use the fruity balance to chop off the leads dramatically on certain spots. It's gonna help create that rhythm and that like stuttery bounce effect. Like maybe right here could be a cool spot. Probably here. All right, so here's the deal. As much as I love this lead, unfortunately, it's gotta go, it's gotta hit the bin. And that's because it's making this stack sound a little soft and this is definitely supposed to be a more aggressive drop. So I truly do need to get like a harsher lead in this mix here. This lead sound, which is absolutely madness. This one is gonna work really well here. Has that super harsh quality that we sort of need to fill out the stack and make it sound nice and aggressive. All right, sweet. So now that we have like the two main elements, you know, we have the drop leads, we have the drop bass. Now it's actually time to start building everything out. I think we're gonna start with the drums first, first and foremost, gotta get your kick in there. Um, Got to get some claps in as well. I have claps from earlier from that splice dive that I did. This one's kind of standard, but this might work well as a layer with the pre-shift clap. Yeah, and then obviously we need to get some sidechain going. I'm gonna turn off the Valhalla delay for right now, just so that we get that bigger contrast between the dry leads and the wet leads. And you know what? After listening to this some more, I think we're gonna swap out the super saw lead for something different as well. This lead freaking is so hectic and dirty, but it might just work. I 
think what we could do, which is very Brooks esque, is just have a potential vocal lead layer or something, but just to play like the second half of the melody here and then here as well. Yeah, so something like that. Why don't we try Sound Goodizer for this lead ad? Just needs a little extra push. Definitely don't want to forget to add some sub to this drop here. Add some compression to it. See how it sounds. Okay, before we go ahead and work on the drop more, now that we have like a melody and a sort of a vibe, I wanna go ahead and add those leads to the build. We also need to turn off the side chain for the leads here. Maybe the drop leads need to be simplified for this build because when that future bounce rhythm comes in, it just doesn't sound good with the current build that I have, unless I want to change my build around. I guess we'll try both options. First, let me just adjust the lead to match the build snare rhythm first. And then what we'll probably do is just repeat one of these notes here for the rest of the build. Okay, so this vocal pluck lead, as much as I love it, it also is making the lead sound a little soft. It's just not what I have in mind right now. This sound kind of works. We're gonna have to adjust the volume. It's a little too choppy, but ideas are there. I'm gonna have to get going soon, so I wanna go ahead and make really quick progress. I'm gonna get locked in real quick. So to start off the track, I guess, oh, baby, please, oh. We'll probably just start with these chords oh, baby. with no side chain. Probably introduce the flutter RP as well, give it more character. A cool fill here would sound good. Let me see what we got. I think a symbol transition would sound good here as well. Honestly, because we want this break to be super energetic, maybe we'll add a downlifter here as well. These drop leads don't sound great in this build right now, but I think what I can do to make it sound cooler is just add an endless smile. I'm gonna use it in like a reverse way. I'm basically starting with it open, then I'll close it a little bit and then maybe open it some more, so. The lead sounds super far away. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. I wanna go ahead and lower the build up a tad. It gets a little too loud, a little too frantic. And I'm gonna also narrow the stereo image of the build. Okay, we're getting there. There needs to be more bass in this build. So maybe what I'll do is I'll extend the aggro bass. Perhaps we'll pitch it up towards the end. I do need to turn off the side chain on it right now. I will say this too, because we have the bass in the build, this impact is gonna make things super messy because this is like a straight sub drop. Um, so we'll opt for more of like, yeah, like an impact that's already kind of messy. Okay, so now I do realize that we need a better riser. Maybe this one can stay in, but we do need just a better one. 
Okay, so this sounds pretty good. I just need to make the drop better now, so. Okay, that kick is better. Now, the bass stack as a whole just needs help. Needs some assistance. Maybe we'll do all the processing on the group itself. I'm gonna take out the volume automations and see how that sounds now. I like this one, but I don't know if I like the other two. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Um, here, it could be cool to start introducing a hat. The one from Splice that I brought in uh, in the very beginning fits well here. I don't know, like I literally have these notes. I don't, it's just one, two, three, and I'm hearing so many other notes. I don't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, right here, it's very typical in future bounce tracks to have. Yeah, that pretty much, I mean, we can add a bass growl or something in this little, in this little section here for sure. We've done three semitones. And then right here, we'll add like a very simple countdown fill type thing. Yeah, the mixing on this drop is no bueno, but the idea is really good. Let's see if I could touch that up a go uh, let me <laughs> Hello, English. <laughs> let me see if I could touch that up a bit quick before I have to leave. This support bass is actually not even necessary, so we're gonna get rid of it for now. We'll throw in some like effects. Kinda just want the initial part of this effect here. Gonna add a Poltec EQ to the whole entire lead group. Okay, I don't know if you guys even noticed, but I kind of made a boo-boo. I <laughs> I accidentally had my bases linked to my lead all group. I didn't even realize <laughs> that's on me, but I fixed it now. And now there's actually no volume automation on the bass, and I kind of like the way that sounds better personally. It just sounds less choppy, but. The last thing I want to do to the bass group is add an R bass. That way we can accentuate this like 80 to 100 hertz frequency range. We are going to create a reverse reverb, <clears throat> ladies and gents. That's cool. Okay, I still have no idea what's happening there, guys. So what I'm gonna do is just record it in. Cool, something like this. Yeah. I threw the catching fire kick in there actually. Quick, it's a little harder than I think I had the being alive kick in there. Sounds a little bit better. This is only the first session working on this song, so I don't really care too much about the mix, but let me try getting a ride in there. Okay, what I'm gonna do for this halfway fill, I'm gonna add CLA effects. Yeah, I just give it a really weird, cool texture. We're gonna bring in the cowboy fill. I hear it so clearly in my head. Where is it at? Right here. And then we'll copy everything over. We will have the drop hats in right away. I'm not gonna bother with like the percussion and the cool like little fills. That would make the drop a bit cooler, but like I said, I am running out of time. But I will add a riser to help us dip out of this drop. Alrighty guys, so I think that's gonna be all the time I have today. I think we made a really cool future bounce track. We have like a little verse, hook, build, or I guess it's really just the hook repeated twice, but regardless, we have a break, got a build, got a cool drop. So let's take a listen from the top, see what I came up with. Oh, baby, please don't ever leave. I'll let the sun go back to sleep, but I'll be here when you need me. Mm -hmm. You're everything I'll ever need, cause it's your love I wanna keep. I'm never gonna say goodbye.
Hey, let's go, baby. Definitely stoked with how this one turned out. I think it sounds cool. Learned some cool things along the way and had a lot of fun making it. So checks all the boxes for a successful studio time with Ross. And I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Shout out again to Oxo Carbo for the idea of making future bounce in this episode of Studio Time with Rouse. If you guys have any comments or suggestions on what you'd like to see next, be sure to drop them down below. So that'll be all for me today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time I upload. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.